Today, I'd always planned to do a layout update, but... Being a poppy area organiser, I don't really have the space at the moment. So I thought instead, I'd make a start on the viaduct. I live about an hour's run from Beer down in Dorset where the Pika factory is and they have um, some layouts open to the public and here you can see their 18 arch uh, display um, and I think it looks pretty good. Well Pico sell their viaducts in various forms and this is the main box which is a three arch formation with, um, with two pillars. That wouldn't be long enough for me, so I thought I'd buy an extra two uh, additional packs, as it were, which contains another arch and another pillar. And as these um, archways are 40 cent uh, yeah, 40 millimetres long, is that right? Yeah, 40 millimetres. It adds up to um, a 70 millimetre span if I've got five arches. 70 millimetres is kind of around about this distance, so that's uh, what I've gone for. Right, what's in the pack? Well, we've got a set of instructions. They seem basic and quite straightforward enough, and we have two packs of plastic components. So we'll ditch those. And the components, uh, the instructions seem to give us the option to convert the whole affair either into a single tra track or to leave it as it is, which is a double track, which makes perfect sense. So if, you, uh, if you're only on a single track, this is still good to go. Having read through the instructions, it becomes obvious that out of these two packs, this is one pack and this is the piers, and in this one is the archways. And they recommend that you build the archways first. And there are kind of two components to these arches. There's the actual brick bits themselves and also a red liner. So there's a brick archway and there's the remaining five. And there's a, a road bed and there's the other three. And here is the red liner that goes underneath the, the road. So this kind of fits in under there, if that kind of makes sense. And it says in the instructions that you need to make up the archways first and then allow them to dry overnight before you insert these liners. Um, and these liners are very flexible, so I'm wondering if we can sort of pre-bend these um, so that they'll make it easier for these to fit tomorrow. And if we kind of, I suppose it's, the word is need it, I suppose, you kind of, yep, it kind of takes on a little bit of a curve. Starting to bend quite a lot. Oops, what I'm trying to do is get it to curl right over and then with a little bit of sellotape to hold it in place we can uh, move on and that is kind of what I'm after. We can leave this then to kind of hold its shape and, uh, and the curve will kind of set into it. So. What I shall do now is cut out these sections um, and once they're good to go, I'll come back to you. I've just realised that I've been referring to this as a Pico kit, but it is actually made by Wills. But that's kind of something or nothing really, because at the end of the day, Pico own Wills. And we're starting to get there. Well, whoever made that 18 arch viaduct I showed you in the um, 
in the Pico display, it must have taken them a lifetime to cut all these out and trim them all. But we're getting there slowly. That's all those bits cut out. And uh, whilst I remember, I didn't have any sanding sticks, so I must pick some up next month in Worley. And if you're going to Worley, this is 2018, by the way, I'll be there on the Sunday. And if you do see me, please come over and say hello. The three um, wall, uh, the inner linings off the tunnel, I've wound those up and I've sellotaped those in place with three bits of sellotape each, so they should hopefully sort of take that shape overnight. So what have I got left? We've got the two archways, two inner walls, two parapets and the road bed. Um, and bear in mind that, of course, this doesn't necessarily have to be a railway viaduct, does it? It could always be a, a road bridge. So, um, you know, it's not just a, a one trick pony. And if you can see on the other side of this, if I zoom in a little bit, um, there's an inscribed line here um, down the centre there, if you can see that. Um, and that's if it's a single track uh, railway. So it's not quite in the middle, but then again, that's probably why. So what do we do now from now? So I've done a trial fit, turning these on there on the inside and the the lining walls, there's two small holes and two kind of dowels poking out. And they hold those into place like so. It's kind of very snug. And the same on the other one. Quite straightforward, really. It really is a nice, easy, basic kit. But what worries me is when you put these walls together, of course, they've got to be very snug, otherwise you'll get a gap forming um, which will obviously be quite obvious when uh, when you come to build it. So make sure these goes together very snugly. I've got a couple of plans in mind to cover this gap, which I'll come to later. So that's all kind of good. And then these parapet bits fit on top of this wall section and cover that up quite nicely. So uh, the only piece of advice is just to make sure you've removed all traces of the flash that holds the bits to the webbing. Excuse me while I cough. <coughs> Gosh. So time to set about gluing it. Now in the, in the instructions it does state that um, to use a liquid polystyrene cement. And the stuff I use is from EMA Model Supplies, a British firm. Um, £2.65 a bottle. Um, be aware of this, it is um, a bit on the old toxic side. Um, so using a well-vented area, I'll just read this, what does it say? Um, use personal protective equipment as required. If swallowed, <laughs> rinse mouth, do not induce vomiting. Sus uh, suspected, of cause, suspected of causing cancer. Mm, no worries there then. Store in a well-ventilated place, keep container tightly closed, dispose of contents container in accordance with local regulations, avoid contact with skin and eyes, do not inhale. So, it's fair to say, don't inhale it, don't get it on your skin, and um, I don't think we need to be told not to drink it. And you put these bits and bobs on this glue on using a kind of paintbrush. So this is not one of my finest paintbrushes, but it is quite a thin one. So all I intend to do is take the lid off this bottle and then paint it sort of down the gaps and glue it together, which shouldn't take a couple of minutes. So without drinking it, so all I'm going to do is paint a line along here. And then hopefully you can see this. Get the road bed into place and then hopefully it should bond. Swing it around the other way. And paint it down the gap. Well, no, there isn't a gap, sorry. Pa pa paint it down the two faces of the track bed and the arch. Okay. 
then leave it a few seconds for this to grab. Obviously making sure it's vertical and make sure it's not poking out the ends. And in not too much time at all, there we have it. The next thing is to uh, put on this piece of stone wall. So that should be quite straightforward. So again, with my little paintbrush, I'll certainly paint those studs. Shall paint along that face there where that uh, track bed hits there. And then pop that wall, that stone face into place. Hoping that I've got it up the right way. Yes, I have. Okay, next thing to do is to paint it along that edge to make sure it has a good grab there. It's a strange old stuff, this polystyrene uh, liquid, liquid glue. Next thing I'm going to do is tip it a little bit and then run an edge, see if I can do it to camera, and then run an edge along here. Weld that face. Paint the ends. We should be good. Okay. Next thing to do is offer it onto the other side. So it's going to go there. A bit ham fisted now, make sure it's flush at the edges. So you can see. At least you won't have to watch me doing the other four. If it all goes as swimmingly as this, then it's a piece of cake to put these together. It really is. Of course, this Pico Stroke Wills kit isn't the only option. There are a few other manufacturers around. There's a couple of continental manufacturers that make them in HO scale. And there's also the... cardboard kit from Metcalf, which I will show you another an example of a little later. Sorry if you're getting bored, but I'm sure you wouldn't want me to sing to you. So in goes the other bit of wall facing. Then that's it, that's better. Then we just need to glue that edge. Zips them up the ends. We're all looking good. And one other thing I have noticed is just if you can see here, I've missed a little bit of flash on the top of that wall section. So it is easy done. Next thing is obviously to pop in these, I think they're parapet side throws, are they? We'll try a little bit along the inside edge first. I never know if it's any good because it evaporates so quickly. 
pop that on. My days as a child, I was always using Airfix uh, polystyrene cement, so I never, I never really have trust in these sort of finer modellers' products. I always seem to think that polystyrene cement was the way to do it, and nothing else would really do. The inside of that edge done. So finally the other one. Now just to need to do the inside edge of that one if that makes sense. Oh now I've got to remove that little bit of flash without taking my hands off. I can't grip it so beautiful. Just a quick check fit. Yep we're good. So, some of that on there quickly, pop it into place. You can feel it kind of slot down on the bricks, turn it upside down, same again as before, and start to run the edge, run some more glue along that edge there. Okay, and then the only other one I need to do is, I'm not too sure I can do it, it's the inside edge of that wall there. And then the one I've just done. So I need to be a contortionist to try to show you what I'm doing. Okay, I think we're done. So, pop the lid back on the bottle of this glue because, as it says, it loves to evaporate as quickly as possible. And there we are, our little brick parapet. Now, if you look underneath, I don't know if you can see this, let's have a go. Um, and there's a, a dot around. Nope, you can't see it there. A set of dots around the inside here, and that's where you thread this wall. So you kind of feed it in, and it'll come around the inside. But that is obviously for another day. Once this one is set, and the other four. So I'll get back to you in a day or two when it's all ready. Well, I've now glued the five arches, um, and here are three that I've yet to fit the, um, the underside brick, brick section. I've already completed two of them. One was quite difficult, and I ended up using um, elastic bands to try to um, keep the sides in as I threaded it through. But in the end, I actually glued it in one side and threaded it in the other. The second one I attempted, it actually fed in quite simply. Um, so, I'll, I'll try and attempt to do this in real time and see if it actually works out. What you need to do is just to thin this um, inside edge of the, of the brickwork slightly to allow it to feed in a little better. It's going to be quite difficult to show you this because of the camera angles, but it is quite, uh, quite obvious. You just need to feed it into two grooves and then it just simply um, feeds in. Now, if I can do this back to front, I can make no promises if you'll see this, because now I can't see if that makes any sense whatsoever. So you feed it in the two grooves and then tease it down along into the, into the um, bridge itself. No, I can't do it and and allow you to, and get you to see it at the same time. It's not the most um, 
difficult task to understand and once you've done ah here we go once you've done one it's quite obvious what needs to happen it's just trying to show you as it kind of comes along right so there we can see it's half fed in if I bring the camera back to wide and then all I'm going to try to do now is to turn it back to me and then feed it back through and hopefully it should locate inside those little studs that I pointed out. It's just flipped out on one side yet again. I think patience is a job, for, is, a, is the name of the game for this. It is a little bit teasy really, but in the end you will get there because it's, after all it's only a couple of bits of plastic. It can't be rocket science, is it? Da -da -bum. As I said on one of them, it, it did. It really was quite um, awkward, and in the end, I just glued it in and then used elastic bands. Um, this one here is just not going over one of those tiny lugs now. So I'm not going to do this because it will just take forever, and you're going to get bored watching. So. Here's two I made earlier in Blue Peter style. That one fed in quite easily, and all I did with, this, with the usual glue is I just glued it around uh, the bottom edge and on the inside. And this one here took a little, little more love and TLC, so I had to use elastic bands to hold it in place whilst the glue went off. But it's not uh, difficult, but it will take me about um, 10 minutes or so on that second one and clearly you've got better things to do with your life than sit and watch me get all very teasy. Oh by the way I'm sorry about my uh, my cough I picked a, a cold and a cough up the other day. Just before I finish on these arches the very first arch I made if you remember I fitted these um, capping strips and on the subsequent arches I haven't done it because I thought it would be better that once the whole thing's assembled and going into place as a, as a one-piece structure, that would be the best time then to fit these capping strips because they would also add strength across um, the two, the, well, two arches, but across all the arches um, and just give the whole structure much more rigidity. So that's the arches finished then. I'll just fit those liners and then I'll start on the um, supports, on the, on the pillars. The arches are made up of five components, which is the two main walls, the two side walls, and a capping strip. The capping strip is noteworthy, really, because if we zoom in a little bit, you'll find it's got two small holes, and this sits on the top. When you bring in the arches, they also have a capping strip, which has two small studs, and obviously the two studs obviously lock into, and then you glue them into those. So please make sure you get these the right way around so the ones with the studs go on the arches without the studs go on top of the pillars. If you've used it as a cut down uh, method with just the one track or as I thought the other day if you wanted to use it as an aqueduct which is much more narrow which is just a, a strange idea I had um, then the capping strip is much smaller as you'd expect but all these stuff all these bits are provided and uh, to put these together couldn't really be much simpler. I mean, there's little guys, and these are the joints are mitered, which is quite nice. Um, so uh, I think Pico, well, Pico Wills, because it's the same company, have thought this through quite well. Um, I do like that, and the fact that there's no um, sort of butt marks, um, which is sort of quite good. The only thing I did need was a, a heavyish weight to hold this wall still um, whilst I pushed the other part up to it. If that makes any sense to you, bear with me like that. No, I haven't taken the top of the glue. Live television. What stress. So, if I push the, the side wall against the main wall, get it in position, and it's just a case of running the, running the glue along it, and with the pressure on the side wall on the main wall, it doesn't move because I've put this great big lump of steel sellotape holder there to hold it steady whilst I glue it. And within just a few minutes that should go off. 
you can see the uh, the shine from the glue on the outside um, and I think you can remove that if you wish if you didn't wish to paint the the whole structure you could remove that with some kind of a an abrasive brush you could kind of get it off with a um, a glass fiber brush you could remove the shine from there or just blow a coat of uh, of matte varnish over it but I have every intention of painting this viaduct which I suppose takes me on to the next couple of videos so the I will paint and weather this viaduct next and then afterwards after that one um, it will be how to incorporate a viaduct into your layout so how to prepare the baseboards um, and the kind of more of the, the hardware issues about uh, um, you know, building a, a, a lower baseboard to accommodate a viaduct. A bit more. So the final piece is obviously pop the structure onto the, uh, the capping strip. And try not to hold the pillar in place because otherwise you could um, influence the angle it's at. Obviously it needs to uh, be straight and if you've glued the thing together properly then clearly it will be straight. So pop it on there, give it a chance for the glue to go off. Couldn't really be much simpler. There we go. So I've simply gl glued two of the arches together and that was quite straightforward, just a case of butting them up together, painting the, uh, the glue um, across the, the faces and also across the decking um, and just make sure it's had a good coating and it is good to go. Um, I mentioned previously about this piece uh, here and this sits on top of a similar piece on the pillar and this has got the two lugs. And to get this in place, because these the, the brick faces um, are very sort of bendy, what you need to do, I'll just zoom in a little bit if I can, is you splay these apart and then offer it in. If you can see those kind of the grooves here. So you splay them apart and you can feel when it goes in properly and then slide it along until it clicks in. I don't think that was in. Let me try it again. So it runs along, splays the the brick liners until it locks into position, which is there. And I'll just pick it up, just to have a little check. And yes, it's in both sides. So now all I need to do whilst I hold it there is obviously glue it in position. And hopefully, <laughs> why did I make this mistake? <laughs> And I'd have to get the top off the glue and put the glue to one side. Right. Proper prior planning. That's all it takes, isn't it? And then obviously with your glue is to carry on um, painting it in and it'll all be good. And then once you've completed this one, obviously it's just a case of repeating them then for the remaining arches so you've got your run of five arches and then of course you can then offer them onto the five pillars straightforward i think one thing is worth a mention is because i've used these um this viaduct from pico it's you, if i've made a mistake and it's not quite long enough i can always add another section or i could put a bit of a, a brick a rampart on one end so it is quite a um a flexible approach when you use these. And then while the glue sets, I've used my faithful sellotape holder uh, just to keep it all in place. And there we have it. And I think it's fair to say it's quite an impressive structure. What I haven't done is glued the whole thing together because what I wanted to do was before I paint it, naturally I need to wash all these, all these surfaces um, to make sure there's no um, oil and grease on there because obviously the paint wouldn't take. Um, it was quite interesting doing the, um, 
the curved brick sections underneath and feeding those through and you definitely need, well I definitely needed an elastic band to um, put the kind of the, the ends together as I fed it through. What was happening is as I was feeding it through it was coming out from the start so once I'd fed that through it was okay. Um, and also some of these brick sections they seem to be a little bit long and I had to sort of just trim them down with a standing knife um, to get these sections to fit in properly. So uh, there we kind of go. Um, what else am I going to do? Well, I've got a, I do own a drone and I'm going to fly over a nearby viaduct because on the rails, I believe there are two check rails inside the main rails. Um, so to model those properly, I just want to get a little bit of footage of that. Um, and the forthcoming videos, there's going to be one on weathering stone, and this will obviously be the subject that I'm going to use, um, and also one on constructing the board on which the viaduct will sit. So obviously you've got the levels of the layout, and then you need a separate board underneath that, so that the, the rail will go across at the, at the right level, as it were, but um, how, to, how to build that board and, and adjust it and get it all right. Anyway, so that will be a challenge, and hopefully you'll find that interesting. So there we go, that just about wraps up today. In the meantime, there should be a video here and here for you to watch, and please don't forget to subscribe, and if you're watching on Facebook, then please don't forget to share. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot, take care, and bye-bye.